Hi, I'm Venus O'Hara and welcome to a new video. I make content about holistic self-love. Today I wanted to talk about the docu-series on Netflix about Ashley Madison. I've been following the story of Ashley Madison for many years and I watched it all the other day and I thought I would share my opinion about it. So if you haven't seen it, this contains spoilers. If you're unfamiliar with Ashley Madison, it is a website, um, online dating website for married people. And the slogan is, life is short, have an affair. So obviously this raises many moral uh, questions about, about affairs, fidelity, um, double lives, etc. And that's precisely why, why it intrigued me so much. Um, the website started because I think the founder discovered that um, on many websites for dating, on online dating websites, about 30% of the members were already in other relationships. So the idea was to try and get those 30% out of those singles looking for singles websites and get them onto a platform where they would all be among similar people who might have the same interests and also that they could trust with their secrets because they both had similar situations. So it was so interesting for me because I've been living in Spain for a very, very long time and I was always fascinated by the, the um, <laughs> how would I say it, the normality of... Um, um, or the acceptance of double lives. I think here where family values or the family institution is so important, I think people kind of maintain these family um, institutions so that they can, because they, they, they're they kind of like, how would I say, it? that's how society is set up. And then they have these double lives on the side. I and mean, this is a massive generalization, but that was my, that's how I... Um, that's what I saw around me a lot of the time. And um, yeah, I saw just so many double lives, so many lies. And I think this is what's um, subconsciously or consciously made me a little bit of a, an, um, a commitment foe because I was just thinking, if you're going to be in a relationship, be real, you know, re be honest about it. And I, I didn't see that much honesty <laughs> around me, to be honest. Also, I did some marketing for a, a similar company, a Spanish version of Ashley Madison many years ago. And um, But anyway, going back to the documentary, I'll talk about my own experience and why this topic interests me so much in a while. So on this three-part series, we follow some people who were directly impacted by the data or the data leak, which was massive. I think it was around 10 years ago now. And what happened was, imagine, imagine when you're online and you're filling out all these profiles, you're giving lots of sensitive information. Imagine a website that's about, um, you know, which has its premise is all about um, extramarital affairs, all the information about people, their sexual preferences, their names, their credit card details, their addresses, all of this information was leaked. And it was, um, it was such an interesting um, phenomenon because, I mean, I remember there were radio shows years ago and people phoning up saying, is my husband on the list? And I'm like, sorry, madam, he is. And um, it just caused so much destruction. But it also raises another question about honesty in relationships. And I think it's really sad sometimes when a couple can be sharing so much, but they cannot communicate their basic feelings to each other because they don't know how. And I think that's a real pity. I think we should definitely learn to communicate in a more authentic and honest way in life. And I just, um, I've spoken about this with many friends who are divorced as well. There's always been something that's kind of um, underlying tension, which doesn't really get discussed in an honest and open way. And then, you know, as the years go by, the rift gets bigger and bigger, and then it just becomes more and more difficult to resolve. Also, years ago, I had this uh, website called nosabesconquienduermes.com, which is, which means you don't know who you're sleeping with, dot com. And that, that's what um, really fascinated me about how you could be sharing a bed every night with someone who has, let's say, secret profiles online, chatting with other people, um, you know, trying to see other people, maybe sleeping with other people, and you have no idea what they are like with other people. You, they are presenting one side um, of themselves to you and then something else to someone else. And I just thought, wow, that's that, that sounds like a lot of work psychologically. It's just easier just to be honest in life. I know it's not that easy because um, I remember I had um, some friends who were in long-term relationships and you know, after 20 years, and then the sex shuts down, um, there's no way of resolving that. And you're in a situation where, hang on a minute, I don't wanna live a sexless life, but I don't wanna undo my family life either. What do I do in a situation like that? So I became a confidant 
for people in that situation. And I started, I started to see it from a different light because I think at the end of the day, we're all human and um, we shouldn't be you know, judging others um, for their maybe not so great decisions. We've all made bad decisions, um, even if you are a faithful person. But going back to the, um, to the docuseries, it was really interesting to follow the lives of some people who were directly impacted by this data breach. And it seems that some of the characters in it wouldn't have revealed um, their double lives if um, if they hadn't been caught. You know, the problem was that they got caught. It wasn't so much about the infidelity in itself, which is which is quite quite sad as well. And there were a couple of people in it who were, you know, claiming to be you know shinier than thou religious people. And I always find that you know those people who you know who are very. Um, very concerned about their reputations, sometimes are the worst people. You know, they're all like pointing fingers at other people and then they're up to no good. I, I, I just think it's, um, yeah, it's, um, I think sexuality is something that we don't discuss enough. And when it's not expressed in a, in a, in a healthy way, there's always another outlet for it, which might not be the healthiest. And, um, and there's also one of the guys in it who got discovered um, committed suicide, which is very serious um, to to think about. Imagine having all of your secrets on a dark web, all of your um, yeah preferences and blah blah blah. And um, and also another thing which was interesting in the um, in the um, documentary was that they found it very hard. I think it was to get advertising at the beginning, uh, and so the actual I think it was the CEO started doing a big media campaign, and he was. Uh, claiming to be a happily married uh, man in a monogamous marriage and he was actually saving marriages so it's a really interesting spin on um, publicity but this was actually very successful that's how many people got to discover the the website and it's available all over the world it still exists today and interestingly when the data leak happened I met this woman um, and the, the thing is when with my job as the sexual wellness content creator many people open up to me with their deep dark secrets and I, I met this woman who told me she was on Ashley Madison. I said, haven't you heard about the data the, the data leak? And she's like, yes, that's how I found out about it. Because I think she assumed that after that point, they would pro- uh, the, 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 the actual security, the cyber security would improve a lot. I'm not sure how that went for her, but you would assume that anyway. Yeah, so let me think what else um, I was interested in, why else I was interested in this topic. Yeah, so I had this website years ago called No Sabes Con Quien Duermes, which was um, online confessions, so people could anonymously um, share their double life confessions, and it was really interesting, there's very juicy stories on there, and I did it in in part just to kind of um, get some advertising to my website, I did it in partnership with another SEO guru who was just using it as a platform to test out different um, SEO techniques, different plugins, etc., but we could not even imagine how well this website did, and in the end I took it, I took it down because I just couldn't be bothered reading all these really twisted, <laughs> it started off um, it, um, being, you know, quite light, and then it just went into these very dark corners, and I thought, no, no, let's not, let's not do this anymore, and, um, but it was a very interesting website, and also it was interesting to have a website where um, there's no email to sign up, and I was generating co- user-related content, so imagine, it was just growing, 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 and I didn't have to do anything apart from just read and approve the confessions, just making sure there were no names in it, nothing that identified the people who were involved in the story, so it was very kind of like a voyeur type thing, and um, I remember at that time, I don't know why, but in 2015, 2016, I was attracting people into my my personal life who were already married. I mean, some of them told me that they had a don't ask, don't tell um, polyamorous relationship. And, and so for them, in their mind, morally speaking, they weren't doing anything wrong. However, I did feel uh, like a side chick sometimes because, well, a lot of the time, because these people, I, I couldn't really like... Um, contact them on a Sunday because I knew they were kind of in family mode and at first I just tried to you know resist the temptation of this particular person and I kind of like ended up ended up in this very um how would I say we were entangled emotionally so it got it got a bit complicated um and then I did even have some thoughts of well, he could leave her for me because I knew there was something emotional developing between me and him but then I had to kind of really st- take a step back when it when it started getting complicated um and it was very hard for me but I started to, um, and then in parallel to that, I was seeing this other guy who I really liked. Oh my God, I really liked this guy so much. There was so much energy between us. And yeah, in in all ways, conversation, sexual, it was just magnetic. 
And but he was a bit mysterious, and sometimes we would be um, we were going to meet up sometimes, and he would cancel last minute. And I was thinking, I was looking forward to seeing you. It used to really drive me insane. That's when I learned the word flaky. I didn't even know that word before that, but he was Mister Flaky. I remember one day I used to. I don't know why, but I always used to wait for him to message me. I never used to take the initiative. And but one day I thought, you know what? I'm going to message him today. And it was a Wednesday, or it was some day in in the middle of the week. And I messaged him and said, do you want to meet up this week or something like that? Then my phone died and um, I went to bed. I charged, I started charging my phone. I had my rabbit vibrator in one hand. And then my neighbor below me was with this woman and they were having wild sex. And she was like moaning scandalously. So I had this rabbit hearing this orgasm downstairs. And then my phone um, was started charging. And then the, the messages started coming through because I had enough battery. And he'd written back to me saying, Yes, I want to see you, but it'll have to be the last time because my wife is coming is back in town. And I was like, what wife? So I just literally had this rabbit in my hand, looked at the ceiling for two hours. I could not believe it. I was so shocked. I can't even tell you how shocked I was. And he said something like, if, if you if you don't want to meet, um, I'll understand. I was like, yeah, too, right, we're not meeting. But I was like, ah, oh, how could I not know this? It was so crazy. But then I looked back at the the signs it seems it's everything with in hindsight it seems clearer you know he never invited me to his place he always messaged me you know during working hours in the day there are many kind of signs that you know could be um quite typical of someone who is married and um playing away and i was so 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 disappointed and in that moment i felt guilty about facilitating this online confessional for um for double life people so i actually took the website down and and in that time and since then i've really been working on my self esteem so i really do believe that if you're attracting you know married people into your life it's because you are i think for me subconsciously it was because it felt emotionally safe because i knew it couldn't get past a certain point because i didn't trust relationships in general because i was you know scared of them because i'd seen so many lies so much li- so many lies around me i didn't want to be part of that and i i, I so to some degree i thought you know um that being you know not investing completely meant that i would have a more honest relationship but yeah I just it just proved me I, I would prove myself wrong i mean really i am yeah it was it was really really sad and um, but over that time i started to work more on my self esteem and started to say no to these people and with the guy who with the you know the polyamorous um, don't ask don't tell um he just keeps messaging me mess- i mean even years later now he's still messaging me and I never, ever, ever answer back. And some of those two guys, they're still kind of like trying to get into my life years later. But um, I, I just don't answer them back. And now that there's the temptation or the attraction for them has disappeared completely because I know that I know my worth now. And I think um, I know I've come to a place where I know I deserve someone who is available, um, emotionally available to me. And and I think that um, attracting unavailable people is, um, is related to self-esteem. But for me, I was a single person you know attracting these people but on Ashley Madison it's like married and married that's the idea so that the um the secrets are kept safe because no one really wants to reveal them you know because the risk is the same for both parties involved um so I think um, you know it's interesting that um I think you know it's just better to be honest and, and I think you know um there was one couple in this um, particular documentary who were actually open about their sexual desires with someone else because it's you know it's a bigger ask to expect your partner to um, fulfill all of your sexual fantasies because sexuality is 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 a huge it's a vast topic you know there are many um, facets and areas to it and um, you know someone might satisfy you on one level but not on another is you know compatibility has has many layers to it um, so it's like thinking you know if you like a certain thing can you live without it um, so how do you how do you um, how do you kind of how do you live like that? So, so I think for me, I, I'm always more interested in the kind of the depth of um, getting to know one person in a more an emotional way. I was reading this book yesterday from a future podcast guest about sex being a love language and how it's a real expression of emotion and and love and, and all of that. And I, that's how I see it as well. Um, that doesn't deny the kind of animal side of us because there is that side too. But I think um, it can be a very destructive force if you are. Um, you know, it can really ruin lives and, and affairs ruin lives. And this is very apparent in the um, in the Ashley Madison 
um, documentary about you know it can ruin families it can short it can create intergenerational or gen- um, um, complexes and um, trauma it, it's a very sad thing and I've seen many people around me who have suffered from this and it's not um, so it's not just about an orgasm or something it, it just you know that the effect on, on on lives can last for a very 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 long time and then some couples will never get over it there's like once the trust is gone it's kind of yeah it's kind of gone yeah but some people just uh you know get on with it and um but i think sometimes the magic is gone in those in those situations um but yeah no one's perfect and we should try to forgive but it's all also about thinking about what you want in life yeah so i i would encourage anyone to um have a life with honest communication sometimes it's not easy to speak about your deep dark desires or just your deep desires in general with with a partner but i think once you do it's so worth it that's what i would like to tell you today anyway and um, that's all my that's my video for today if you've watched this documentary please share your thoughts in the comment section below i would love to read and um, if you would like to download my life upgrade meditation which is 100 affirmations that represent the 12 areas of the life wheel then check out the link in the description below and i'll be back soon with some more videos thanks for watching